hunting stand today. So uh, stay with us. If you ain't subscribed to the channel, you like hunt videos, diesel videos, farming, homesteading videos, click the subscribe and the bell notification next to it. You'll get all my new videos. Let's go. Spots we're going to pick out. This is an old blind that we made years ago, and I haven't really had much hunting hunting time in this blind. Uh, my dad more built this uh, for my grandfather. A couple years I've cleaned up around it, but nobody's really used it. Uh, my grandfather really hasn't used it. He's getting older, which is okay. And if he does want to hunt, he's going to be a lot happier in a nice stand. So we got a uh, four by four by 16. We're not going with too good of a plan here. Uh, we're basically just going to build a quick structure, something we could hunt out of this year. So our layout's going to be first on our priorities. I'm going to weed wax some of this, get some of this cleared out so we can get in there and see where we want to lay this stand out. But this is going to give me great hunting. Uh, it's all through the valley. This is actually, this is a big valley. You can't really see it good. And that's the hill it goes up. So they kind of funnel the roads way, roads way down there, but that, that is where the road is and it, and it funnels everything in the, right into the central location. And then if you guys watch the channel, my hunting blind up there, uh, that's where my hunting blind is about a couple, a few hundred yards up there. So this way we can move around a little on the property. So let me get started weed whacking. Today we're using our steel FS91 weed whacker. It's a good weed whacker we use here often on the farm. We don't have no sponsorships with steel. Just telling you honest products that I use that I found that I like. We had an echo. It was good too. So uh, we're going to start this up, but uh, I'll send some links in the description down below where you can buy this weed whacker. As you could see from where Miss Fancy standing, we got our ear all weed whack cleared out. That's the first thing I wanted to do. Give us a little bit better idea of where we want our layout. Here, I'll stand here with you guys so you can kind of see right where we want it. That'll give us access down here. Our road will be clear. And then we'll actually, we'll clear out some lanes through, like right through here. That way we'll have access here, access here. And this fall, from rifle, we're gonna have access to all this. As I said, we got no real plan here, but I know, you know, a six by eight or eight by eight platform, it's gonna be more than sufficient for two men in a hunting stand. So that way, if we got like me and my dad or my brother or cousins come over, we can go on each way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure it out and if eight feet's cutting into the trail too much and we can't get the tractor and equipment by, we're gonna shorten it up to six feet wide and then just eight feet long. So everything we're using, it's gonna work off eight feet lumber if we gotta cut a foot or two off here and there, so be it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna situate it perfect to where, you know, it's gonna you're gonna get a vantage point through those trees and through those trees. That's a little bit of work, but we're almost there. Remember, this is just a hunting stand, so we're only gonna go a couple feet in the ground. Three feet isn't necessary. I mean, we're gonna have cross bracing, X bracing. So, yeah, we're getting there. Let's get these posts finished. All right, we only got three more to go. And then after that, we're gonna start assembling the floor, putting down our floor joists so we have some platform to stand on. Very least, we don't get done today. We could still hunt out of her. And then we're gonna put on a roof. Got a couple options. If you're trying to do this real fast and have something really structurally sound, I'd throw in a couple bags of sacrete or cement. But I think we're just back filling with uh, what we have here, the dirt. And then that way we could still wiggle around and get everything plumbed and squared up. one in you should make sure when you start off with every post make sure everything is plumb you want to put a level on this side and a level on that side when you get your four post then i'm going to show you how to tell if it's square we're going to measure measure side to side in an x pattern both sides should match each other also two feet is a sufficient for us may not be sufficient for you i do suggest three feet or better whatever is up the code but for around here this is the way i do it post number two is in what I decided to do, instead of going eight by eight, we were gonna go six by eight, just because of the layout here, if you remember, I decided to do a six by six. And I'll tell you why, because we have a lot of eight foot two by fours laying around, not a lot of tens and twelves. So we would like a one foot overhang and a one foot overhang shed style roof on this. I noticed a little bit of a warpage on our board from storage. 
So I figure I'd square up our holes right now before we put them all in, because once we get elevated, it's probably going to get out of square just a little bit. What I came up with is I measured from this pull hole to that pull hole and diagonally the other way, complete opposite. Now I got 104 and 104 inches. And I put my tape on there, which I should be using a string line, but it's the accuracy is not needed in a tree stand. I, I did a makeshift uh, string line with my roller and both pulls line up six feet perfectly square that way. So we're perfectly on point for as far as squareness goes. So we'll just have to keep worrying about plumb now. Number three is in. I think what we're going to do at number three, though, because it's in this, this swell right here, we want as much weight on the bottom, and there's a heck of a bow in this post. So what we're going to do, we'll just throw it in dry, and the moisture will take care of it. We're going to use Rural King's handcrete. It's like sacrete, but it's a little cheaper, and 60-pound bags are a little easier to handle than 80. So throw a bag in there, and then we'll put the dirt on top. To some, this might sound like common sense, but for people that are just getting into the sport and building, notice this pole has the curve down towards the end there. That's the end you want to put in the ground. That way, this is all nice and plumb for your tree stand. So that's all right. We're getting number four in. On to the next step. It's going to go up the house. And we're going to see what we have as far as eight-foot lumber for these joists. All right, so we have all this old decking behind my shed we built. I probably pulled that off a job around eight years ago, maybe more. So I'm gonna pull it out, see if it's still good, but it's all treated lumber. I'm sure it'll be suitable for a good hunting right, stand. So the decking board's checked out. We're dragging them down to the hunting spot and uh, we're, we're building our stand. And yeah, that's what we're doing next. We're gonna put our floor joists in and then start building the deck and then the roof. So what I went and did, and I started from this pool. This is gonna be the face, so figure we'll make this look the nicest. I went up two, four, and six feet, and I'm gonna start just putting these, uh, you know, pylons on, and then that way that'll kind of hold it a little tighter and give us something to stand on when we bolt our first floor joist down. Now what I went ahead and did is, as we were running those runners up, I put a two by four and I screwed it to each one. And what I'm gonna do is I marked in between and allowed for my two, uh, three and a half inches for our two by four. I'm gonna make a little ladder as we go. 